How are you all doing? So good, Jeremy. How are you? <laughs> Yay, I'm great. Now I have to give an introduction. Welcome to Dank Conversations. My name is Joy Marie Thompson. I go by she, her pronouns. I'm a dance artist currently living with my family in Pittsburgh, PA. And I joined Dank this year at around maybe April? That sounds about right. April. All thanks to these lovely three humans here who I want you all to introduce yourselves. So give me your name, your pronouns, where you currently are right now and what you do. Hi, I'm David Gons here. I'm one of the co-founders of Dank with these two lovely people. Um, I am a New York born and raised dancer in the like concert contemporary dance world. Um, I am also a photographer. Uh, I'm currently in the process of trying to get into law school, which is super fun. Um, and I've been a dancer here in New York for about 15 years. Uh, and we'll, I think we'll get to all the other fun biographical dank business later. Hi, uh, my name is Alex Rodabaugh. I use he, him pronouns. Um, starting to experiment with using they pronouns. Um, yeah, I am a dancer, choreographer, and performer. Um, currently in Muncie Lenape land, also known as Brooklyn. And I've been here for 10 years as of August. Um, is that, I think that's it. <laughs> and finally. <laughs> hey, I'm Effie, I use she, her pronouns. And um, I'm also a co-founder of DANC or DANK. Um, I moved to New York in 2010 and, and kind of focused on dancing and other people's work for the first like five years of my dance career here. Um, mostly in the kind of, kind of experimental downtown world, but also in some music videos. And uh, I'm now really just focusing on choreographing and I perform in my own work also. Um, and I identify as a writer as well. Did I say I use she, her pronouns? Did I say Good that now. I'm on Wander and Lenape lands in Manhattan? That's where I am right now. Perfect. I think I checked all the boxes. Okay. <laughs> you checked them all. Now, please let us all know how you all met. Before Dank even came into thought, how did you all meet? Well, Alex and I kind of go back. I mean, we like ran in similar circles, I guess. And I remember having conversations with you like, probably five years before we started Dank about labor and unions and the dance field and kind of the gaps we saw or like what we what we wanted the field, the future of the field to look like. I remember having really imaginative conversations with you about that. Yeah, we took, um, we've taken like a hundred Cunningham classes together. <laughs> um, right. And it, it wasn't until, I mean, it. I feel like it wasn't years after that we started being like, hey, let's talk about how this is going. <laughs> yeah. I think I was having conversations, similar conversations with a lot of people around that time. Mm -hmm. And then um, I guess one of those people that I was having those conversations with uh, reached out to me about writing an article for Dance Magazine about whether freelance dancers need a union or could unionize and I didn't actually know a lot about the topic I mean it's still like <laughs> a work in progress there's a lot to know but um, I accepted and wrote that article which was a really fun research process and and in that process I met Griff Braun um, who's the director of organizing and outreach at AGMA now and interviewed him for the article and in our conversation I mean we really hit it off and he said uh, kind of off the record at the time, you know, we at AGMA would actually really like to do something. Um, and I said, cool, like count me in. And that's when we started to schedule freelance dancer focus groups, which at that time in 2018, mm -hmm. is that right, David and Alex? Um, <laughs> so. At that time, there were conversations between AGMA and freelance dancers that we sort of curated these groups um, from different walks of life as it were in the New York City dance community and um, they talked about what they needed and AGMA talked about what they did as a union and what how unions worked basically and that's where I met David. 
David, tell us about that interaction. Yeah. Uh, also, I didn't say that I am on uh, one seat in Lenape and Canarsi lands and use he, him, his pronouns. Um, wanted to make sure I did that. Um, my I came to that because I'm a member of AGMA. Um, I've been a member of AGMA since 2008. Uh, I joined, yeah, in 2008. Uh, when I started dancing in opera productions, I used to dance for uh, Sean Curran, who's a contemporary dance uh, choreographer here in New York and the chair of the dance department at NYU Tisch. Um, he choreographs a ton for opera. He directs operas um, as, as well as having this contemporary dance company. And I started working for him because he hired me for an opera gig. Mm -hmm. um, and that got me into AGMA. And I'm now on the board of governors of AGMA. I was elected two years ago. Um, and I've worked with Griff for a number of years um, in his prior capacity as the uh, New York area dance executive for AGMA, which he was just, he was like the, the point person for all dance companies in uh, in New York and the New York region. And AGMA has like all these regions. Mm -hmm. um, and he also used to dance at the Met. He was a delegate at the Met. And then he left and a few years later, I became a delegate at the Met. So we worked together a lot. Um, and he and I had worked on a sort of similar idea of just like trying to get Agma to reach more into the freelance dance world. Um, and I just come from a different end of the freelance dance world than he does. Um, he danced for ABT for a long time, Lar Lubavitch. So he was more on the ballet side. And I'm definitely more on the like, I, I think now it's like sort of referred to as midtown, like contemporary dance. It's not the downtown, um, but it's also not sure ballet, but it's ballet derived. Could we, you know, maybe that'd be helpful for us to like, you know, because, you know, people that are not maybe in New York would have a hard time understanding maybe what that means. So like there's uptown yeah. dance, midtown dance, downtown, yeah. I kind of understand, like, you know, very postmodern, swing the arms, kind of ham. Yeah. Midtown is, how would you well, describe The midtown it? thing is funny because New York is one of the only cities in America that has a midtown <laughs> or an uptown for yeah. that matter. Most cities just have like downtown is where the city is. Yeah. Um, up, uptown was the designation for like just ballet dance because all the ballet companies were like up right north there. of 60th Street. <clears throat> um, and downtown was sort of like the village was where a lot of things happened with Judson Church and um, the sort of like modern and contemporary dance like revolution happened largely like geographically on the lower end of Manhattan. This is as I have received the lore of the New York City dance world. Mm -hmm. um, and Midtown became a designation for everything that didn't meet that like later on. Got um, it. You had, you know, ballet, ballet companies who were doing contemporary work. You have contemporary choreographers who came out of the ballet world, but like are definitely making work that is much more modern derived. Um, I mean, it's all, there are no good names for, for dance. Everything crosses over so much. Right. So you were in Midtown, anyway. Evie and Alex were in downtown <laughs> doing Cunningham. Y'all met in AGMA, you came together, you met, and then some things started meetings. to percolate. Oh, you had meetings. We had meetings. We had invited meetings. With, invited with? Uh, so this is, Evie was saying, we like curated some meetings uh, with Griff of I see. dancers who we knew would give a sort of broad representation of the uh, modern and contemporary dance world in New York with like a little bit of ballet also. A lot of the ballet companies are already unionized is the thing. Mm. Um, so they're already in the AGMA umbrella. But, um, you know, we we both have had a lot of these conversations with our various circles throughout the years. Like I became a delegate at the Met because I was usually the person standing up saying like, uh, you we can't do that. Like we are human. <laughs> we have right. like, fragile bodies. So do you um, feel like all of you were the like the three that were like always standing up for other people, like always the ones speaking out? Uh, in my in the like, companies no. I dance for, I would say that. Um, I no, I mean, well, there's just no consider there's there's no conversation about um, about safety or or payment or contracts or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, in the, in the dancing that I've been doing, um, you agree to the project, somebody sends you an email, you sign it without looking at it, and then you show up and you hope you get paid. 
So that was kind of the like, it, it was more the experience of, of not having any protections. And um, it wasn't until I did a performance at the Museum of Modern Art um, when I felt like I saw the pay scale that professional dancers were getting at that level. And I was like, oh, this is not, you know, I think up until then I was like, okay, this gig isn't so great, but well, what do I expect? You know? Mm. <laughs> and then once I got there and I was like, oh, you mean it's like this at the top too? And then I was like, oh no, no, we have that's to start problem. doing something because there's no union. There's no one to talk to. There's no power. And that's, that was my trigger when I was mm. like, okay, I'm going to, the, like, I don't see any other path towards a better life for dancers besides organizing. Got it. Abby, yeah. what would you say is yours? For me, I was coming from a place, I had done a little bit of other kinds of advocacy projects. Like with my friend, Alice McDonald, I started this thing called Free Advice, which was basically like a non-hierarchical co-mentorship event for dancers. Um, because I was trying to solve this problem of feeling like the information was really like decentralized. And so there are all these like young people coming to New York and trying to like make it. But I felt a real sense of isolation and um, like it was sort of like every person for themselves in a way and had to learn a lot of things. Um, I learned from others, but I sort of felt like in the beginning of my career, like I was trying to learn it by myself in a way. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw that as a real like opportunity to create some different structures where dancers could talk to each other and talk about what we were experiencing, like what Alex is talking about in the workplace. Um, I think that that talking and bringing these things out into the open that kind of are a little bit taboo in a way, like talking about what you're getting paid talking about the power dynamics you're experiencing in the room, talking about being afraid of being fired if you ask for certain things. Um, that's really powerful. Absolutely. And so you all found this in yourselves. You came together. And then please, please give us the, the tea. Give us the tea. How and when did you all go Dance Artists National Collective? <laughs> if I remember right, it was on a text yeah. chain. No, I, well, I think we were on the phone, but yeah, you we're on the phone. we were texting, like brainstorming ideas back and forth. It was maybe like six months or more after that last freelance dancer focus group. And Alex had had the idea of, of like creating monthly open meetings. Um, and we needed a name. You need a name. Who came? Okay, so, but who came up with the name? I don't know. I it was kind all, of like a collaborative text. It was we just had this three grand us. idea yeah. of it being like an, an adaptive acronym that it would be like D-A-N-C, but then we could like, we could add another letter to the end for various kinds of things that would all be plays on like dance like, and dancer. Dance, like D-A-N-C-ers, dancers. Uh, date conver <laughs> dance conversations. Date there you go. Dankations. <laughs> Dankations. <laughs> I see. Okay, that's smart. Yeah. I like it. Y'all were thinking of marketing already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love varying that. degrees of success, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I just want to, I want to ask you, how does it feel to see Dank have, like, it first started as a monthly meeting just to bring dancers together, and now it's grown into this bigger thing. Can you speak to that? How does that feel? Feels pretty amazing. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would say that um, I'm so happy to, that there is now. Um, it's it's a space inside of an ecosystem because there's all these other conversations happening, where you know people are talking about healthcare or they're talking about mental health or talking about race. They're talking about uh, accessibility, and so this is just one spot where it's like, okay, we're talking about dancers, you know, and then all of those conversations are overlapping with these other groups. Um, and I'm just, there just wasn't that space before. And that's, that's what I'm really proud of. Yeah. It, that for there to be something that isn't just like, Hey, so we're organizing a couple of meetings of invited people to, you know, like focus group, what dancers problems are. 
Mm -hmm. um, but to have more of a like a dedicated, hopefully permanent or permanent ish space where people can come to and know that like that's what this is for and also feel comfortable with it as a, a space that has a, a reputation and a history of you know like being open to people's voices and respecting people's voices Absolutely. that kind of free communication like breaking the taboo that evie was talking about is is really one of the key pieces of the whole puzzle and yeah i feel like the, the that dank is developing something of that reputation is is immensely satisfying I agree. I think I've learned so much just from being a part of all the meetings, talking to you all. I've learned so much. As someone that I graduated college um, from SUNY Purchase in 2018, and my whole thing was like, okay, I just have to get a job. <laughs> like, I just have to get a job. And I've been very lucky with having jobs where the directors were very transparent about funding financing and making sure that I got paid or if they couldn't they were very transparent about that and would make sure that transportation or something so I've been very lucky in that area but I just wanted to find a place where I could talk about these things because I just want dancers to feel supported and credited yada 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 y'all know that Evie do you have anything to speak on that how does it feel to see Dank grow into this thing well, I mean, I, that was always our intention, you know, to like build something bigger than ourselves and build something that could hold a lot. Um, and it's been like really incredible to watch that happen and to watch. Um, I mean, I think one of our challenges was trying to figure out a way to build like a non-hierarchical governing structure, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is like, definitely a worthwhile enterprise and also really hard mm -hmm. so watching that evolve has been I mean you talk about learning a lot Joy Marie like same I've learned so much from working with everyone in the group in different ways um but yeah I'm excited to see what's you know what's next mm -hmm. I'd love to hear more about the challenges of organizing within dance and working dancers uh, so the interesting thing is part of the success that we had in 2020 was that nobody was working, you know, like yeah. working dancer was an interesting sort of moniker for people in that, you know, there, I mean, not the unemployment rate for dance was hundred percent for months and it's still very, very high. Mm -hmm. So we had, I mean, we had a, we felt we had a responsibility to people to take the meetings for being monthly place for, you know, more information gathering, see what the lay of the land is in the dance community and turn it more into uh, what we did, which was a weekly meeting of just trying to like give people a space to to commiserate with each other and be together yeah. and, and know that they're not alone when we're all stuck in our houses, unable to work. Like dancers oh are collaborative goodness. people. Yes, um, We're so used to being together in like large groups of very tight knit people working very closely together. And now this is the closest we get. It's um, so and the feeling hard. is not the same. It's so but hard. So it is. And so that was, it was a challenge for sure. But also it was an, like, I mean, not very many good things happened last year, but one positive for us at least was that we were, it gave us much more opportunity to really get people together and to, to kickstart this thing of sort of ga uh, gaining momentum of, of people are coming every week and more and more people are coming every week and we're getting, you know, 50, 60, 70 people every Monday coming together to talk about, you know, what they're going through and to, to get information out to people about, you know, new changing rules on unemployment and, and how to deal with like losing their healthcare from their employer and, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so while, you know, we were and still are enduring this ridiculous, yeah. unimaginable nightmare hellscape of, you know, that last year was, mm -hmm. it, it did afford us that opportunity to to get people really in the room together because all that energy that we know is there in the dance world, but is usually tamped down by like, everyone's exhausted from working three jobs and doesn't have the time or the energy to, to devote to something like this. Like all that energy could get directed somewhere mm -hmm. and people needed to put it somewhere. David, I'm happy you said that because, you know, I was so sad losing my job. Um, 
because I was so excited, right? You're so excited, especially my age. I was so green. I'm like, yes, I got, I got the dance job. I'm going to be able to pay my bills. And then it was gone. It was gone. And the producers, there was no communication about when it was going to come back, when the show was going to come back. Abby's like, oh my goodness. I know, because that's how I felt. And coming to Dank, and you know, you know, the company I was with, we were trying to organize and trying to figure out ways to, when we came back, advocate for ourselves, but it just kind of fizzled out. And I realized that it does take a lot of stamina to do so. And I also think it takes a lot of education. And I think that Dank really, really, and that's why I encourage so many dancers, especially freelance dancers to come here to, to go to the general meetings because you have to learn about this stuff. You have to learn how to negotiate. You have to learn how to write these things out and then get the momentum from like-minded people. So I just thank you for creating this space to do so. Evie, you were working though. I saw you well, see, you were working. But how, so how was that working during COVID? Well, I mean, I'm fortunate to have a freelance job that's not in dance. And that's how I pay my bills. And so for me, I mean, talking about like Joy Marie, talking about that, like needing that stamina um, to really sustain an organizing idea. Like mm -hmm. I really came up against that in this last year, transitioning out of grad school, which is where I was when we started DANC or Dank. I was actually um, in Illinois, even though New York was my artistic home. Okay. Getting my MFA. And um, I came back and was like trying to like work all these hours and also like suddenly my own creative process wasn't at the center of my life the way it had been in grad school. And that's when I got really burnt out um, and had to take a step back from organizing, which was like really hard, but also mm. really necessary at that time. You know, we have to like take care of ourselves <laughs> in order to be able to care for our communities. and. Um, talking about difficulties with organizing, I think, I mean, it's my personal belief that Dink really needs funding in order to be sustainable and effective as an organization. And, um, you know, I kind of like experienced that firsthand of trying to hold all these different initiatives that we were so excited about doing. And another reason that I'm really glad that the leadership has sort of spread out in a way that seems really nice right now, um, or it's evolving anyway, which is good, I think. Mm -hmm. I think so yeah, too. Alex, do you have anything to say to this? The challenges with organizing, um, especially during COVID? Uh, the challenges of organizing. Um, well, first, I didn't know what organizing was. I, I went to some DSA meetings. I went to um, the Writers Guild uh, that was doing some things with freelancers just to be like, okay, what is this? And um there was no guru i mean i talked to some people but they were like very old and very burnt out and super uninterested in doing the work <laughs> like listen, uh, uh, you do this try it i don't know yeah they're like i don't know you guys can try this if you want uh i've done this for 50 years you know it's like okay <laughs> um and so the only thing i could think of was like well it looks like it's a group of people who get together and talk to each other um and then move on from there uh and so yeah, this has been a whole learning experience. Um, for dancers especially, I think it's hard for organizing, partially because it's hard to know if you're a dancer. Like some people decide like, I'm quitting dance. And then some people are like, I haven't danced in years. <laughs> and then it's like, well, now I'm a choreographer or like I work in admin. And it's so that it's sort of like, you know, who like who's allowed to be in this space or who's allowed to take on that identity. Mm -hmm. um, I've always thought of it as like, I, I, I'm i interested in focusing on that aspect of myself that is the dancer. Mm -hmm. um, and then another difficulty is, um, I'm thinking as, as I, I've been asked to do a performance and it's a commission. And um, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the money I was given uh, was, not enough to cover what I was asked to do. And so I feel like that's often what's happening with choreographers. And it's been um, it's been even more of a learning experience to be like, uh, 
I, I don't know, how do we get to that next level? Because when I push back as a choreographer, I'm sort of being told like, well, you're lucky to be here and have this oh, opportunity. And I'm like, right. wait, that's what I was told for being a dancer. More freedom, more, more, what's the word? Money. Continue. <laughs> um, well, I just think it's like, there's this idea that choreographers are just, supposed to fundraise or something but when i've done fundraisers most of that money comes from my family and that's just not okay right. so they, they helped us with college training yeah, exactly Dance there's class. just a there's a, been a severe defunding of the arts and um the response to that has sort of been like well it's super overcrowded and only the cream of the crop gets up there you know but in reality it's like no this is severely underfunded Mm -hmm. and we need higher taxes we need public funding um when i hear someone say that about hedge funds i'll believe it Ooh, what's a hedge, hedge fund? hold up help, help us out what is a hedge fund? Help us uh, out, they're Dave. just like like giant financial uh uh sort of uh, it's a whole thing <laughs> they're gotcha. uh, large We're like inv investment arms right yes the, they're they're people who make and manage tens of billions of dollars a year and there seems to be endless room for those regardless of size or prestige. So uh, I'll believe the like only the cream of the crop get to survive when it applies to those institutions too. So then I have a, I have a question to, to pose for all of you. You know, if you're speaking to a young dance artist, young dance worker, right? And they're seeing the, the dance world literally just kind of be up in flames um, right now. And they're nervous. They're nervous. Like, they're like, how do I survive in this? How do I do this? It seems like there's no end in sight. What do I do? If you could give them one advice, what would it be? Evie, go first. God. Do you okay. have it? I can circle back. I'm, I might need a minute. I'm going to, like, go into some deep, hard wisdom right now and come back to me. I'll come back to you. <laughs> Who's ready? Uh, I mean, I don't have any non-cynical advice at this Give point for us, David. artists the so i mean i would honestly have to tell anyone who especially if they're like in school right now paying seventy thousand dollars a year for a degree in dance to like really really dig deep and really look at like what they what their priorities are at the moment like i how do you tell someone to like it it was already a rough proposition you know last year before right. COVID when there were jobs to do to, to tell someone like, yeah, that's totally worth it. You should pay 200 something thousand dollars for a, you know, a BFA or even just like, a, you know, a BA or BS yeah, in dance um, conservatory or not to go out in this world where like, if you make that back in the first decade of your career from just from dance work, mm -hmm. you, you are doing it. You're, you're making it happen. You're Misty Copeland. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So that was yeah. already really dodgy. That was already a tough lift. And now to a dance world that like doesn't exist, like I, I don't know what to tell people. I'm retired now. Like I, I already only had like a year left anyway because I knew I was applying to grad school. I'm yeah. Should be starting law school in August um, of David, I'm gonna pause you because I'm a, I want to circle back to that. I'm but I want to hear what other yeah yeah. yeah. What, the other two have to say, because I want to know what y'all are doing now, but I want to yeah. you know, hold hold that. <laughs> Love it. Alex, do you have any advice? Um, yeah, my advice would be, um, okay, <laughs> I'm not going to quote Angela Davis, but I'm going to <laughs> try to remember what she was talking about. I was watching an interview with her on Democracy Now!, and she was sort of, she was giving advice to people who were organizing for um, racial justice. And she was, she was hearing like that they're doing all this organizing work and it doesn't feel like there's anything happening. Um, but then all of a sudden this summer with George Floyd, there was a huge movement and it was the biggest um, protest in, in history, I think world history potentially. Yeah. Um, and she was sort of saying, like, you never know, like, things can change on a dime. And it's really important to be ready. Um, and so I would say, like, things do not look good right now for the arts and for dancers. They were in a crisis 10 years ago. So I don't know what this is. 
<laughs> um, but just like keep, like it's not over. Dance will always happen. It always has, it exists because it's a part of the human experience. And um, there will be a moment when this thing shifts and just be ready for it. Boom. Heavy. Such good wisdom coming from these two. I think to build on that or offer something in addition, I would say um, to continue like reevaluating what your what it is, why it is you dance, what it is you love about dance, and allow that to change and evolve because it will as you mature, uh, most likely, and find find ways to stay close to that regardless of who's giving you what opportunity. And then I would also say that opportunities are not a reflection of your worth or your value. And um, to really remember that. And then the last thing I would say is to be kind to everyone mm -hmm. because you just never know. Um, and sometimes that's like easier said than done. You know, I would say try to avoid gossip. <laughs> If you can. Um, oh my goodness, yes. I like everyone is doing their their best, probably most likely. Um, and if you kind of like operate from that assumption um, and a place of like being grateful, <laughs> and I don't mean like you're lucky to be here, but I mean like like focusing on what you have and what you can do and and what you can provide for yourself and for those who are close to you. Like that's just kind of life advice, not not even specific to dance, I guess, but. Um, that's what I would say. But we need if I can to add some dank them. wisdom. Dank wisdom. That's a new. That's a new. That's a new blog. Um, dank wisdom. That's a new have, uh, Instagram post. Yeah. I'll tell the team. <laughs> we spent a, a large part of the pandemic also just trying to keep people aware that like no one is doing like full out training right now. Right. You know, like no one's doing Grand Allegro at home. Maybe like three people are doing Grand Allegro at home, but everybody right. else has a, a living room like I do. Um, that I can do tondus, <laughs> maybe if I move everything. Um, and to just be aware that like, if you are, if you are still trying to train at home and you're really trying to keep up with that, know that when you are going to be asked to dance, like it's not 2020, you're going to need time. You're really going to need to remember like continuing the self-care and, and self-maintenance, like it's going to take months for a lot of people, even people who have been taking ballet class at home every day to really be back in full performing shape like they were before the pandemic because no one's been able to jump, no one's been able to leap, no one's been able to partner, all of these things. Like most people probably don't have room to do real floor work at home. Um, it's going to take time. And to know that like when miraculously people are able to finally start going back to work for you know however long that takes, like everyone is going to need time to really build back to where they are. This is a conversation that's happening uh, at Agma across all of Agma's companies to like make sure that the companies understand that and build into their sort of like, um, as dancers start going back to work, build that that staging back in, in like a structured way. Um, but know that as a freelancer, like you're probably gonna be responsible for that yourself. Um, and to make sure that you don't do the good dancer thing and just like jump in and say, I can do it. Yeah, no, like I'm ready because no. you're probably not and you will hurt yourself gonna, and yeah. nobody needs that. Absolutely. And choreographers, I've already, I'm like, listen, don't expect the leg to be up. And if the, <laughs> if, if there, if the expectation is there, let it go. They Just let it go. Know that. <laughs> it's going to be at 45 to 90 for at least six weeks, maybe. And then I'll decide, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's Call what that I a show move. Oh, yeah. That's what I want dancers right now to know. Like, uh-uh. No, no, no. I'm an athlete. You can't. No, wait. Excuse me. I need a month of training before I hit the stage. What are you talking about? No, no, no. I need Epsom salt baths. I need COVID tests. I'm, that's what I want. I want us all to act like divas into, in 2021, yeah. 2022. Because we deserve it. We oh. deserve it. So please tell me, what is your role in Dank right now? And then what are you doing? Are you still dancing? Do you still want to dance? Are you retired, like David said earlier? What's happening for 2021? Who wants to go first? So 
My role right now is super fan. I am sitting back and beholding the beauty that is being created by all of these artists, like as always out of thin air. <laughs> and um, what I'm doing now is I am like trying to stay as close as I can to my creative process, which um, fortunately I can go to the studio by myself, which has been like a total balm during this time. Like I'm so grateful that I can do that. Yeah. Um, because I have a freelance job <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm like trying to stay in really close touch with my artist friends, biking a lot, bird watching is sustaining me also. So yeah, that's, that's me. Love it. And do you plan on coming back to Dank <laughs> as a thought <laughs> on, the, on the committee? Do you plan on it? Um, you know, I think I want to be, be careful to not like burn myself out again. And I just like hope that for everyone who's organizing. And I think, you know, if there's like the right timing for me and the right timing for Dank and the right role where I can be really supportive to what Dank needs, then, you know, absolutely. I see that. And Love it's it. like, you know. Self care and then maybe we'll catch you later. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Okay, Alex. Like that. What are you up to? What's your role? Um, I, th I think my role right now is just kind of holding the center, making sure um, we since we switched to the open steering committee, there isn't really like um, there isn't like a set of, of people who are definitely going to show up. Um, so I'm going to make sure someone shows up <laughs> and uh, keep keep the ball rolling and um, yeah, I think it's really hard with the burnout. Um, I, I, what I think is wonderful is that this can continues to move forward as people drift in and out. And I think that's always been um, something I wanted, I was hoping for mm -hmm. um, when this started so that it wasn't depending on any one person because it takes all of us to do this. Absolutely. David. Um, so I, I also, I, basically the same time as Evie, uh, took a step back from dank work. I was in the middle of studying to take the LSAT again and starting work on my law school applications. And that was just like a full-time job for a well, while. I want to show you for a second. Cause there was a time I thought I was going to take the LSAT. <laughs> I have that same book. You Logic have games Bible. Listen, if you, have, if you know anybody that wants this, I will sell it to him. Cause it's looking at oh, me. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Alex so cute. Alex and I could do that with our cats, kind of. <laughs> Hold up matching cats. If anybody wants to buy my LSAT books, please. <laughs> Look, wow, uh, what a business. <laughs> it Look. really is. No one uh, secretly, you can get a lot of these used on Amazon for really cheap. Yeah. Um, but continue. So, so I, I took a step back just because I knew that that was going to require a lot of time. And it wasn't really until like, I went a couple of weeks without um, doing like the, it was like 20 something hours a week of, of emails and organizing and, and planning. And um, I had been going to, when we were doing the uh, floating letter of agreement, all the focus group meetings for that, I was like sort of going to all of those meetings. So that was, yeah. you know, like five meetings a week for a couple of hours. Um, and it wasn't until a couple of weeks out from that that I realized actually that I had like super burned myself out and that like I, I already have like issues with anxiety and stress and and had like totally blown all of that out. Um, I like it took me like a, a while to like get my appetite back, which I didn't realize was actually gone. It was a whole thing. I was not doing the self care that we preached to everybody. So um, I'm very glad I, I took a step back. I would really like to start coming back to meetings and I keep trying, but uh, we're also in the middle of getting everything together for Met negotiations right now. And I'm the co-chair of the, the ballet department committee for that. So um, that is also a lot of work and yeah. I'm trying not to burn yourself exactly out. like Evie said, try not to like burn myself out on, on well, that stuff, but it, I'm so heartened met. to see how Dank has moved forward. And I feel, I don't feel, and this is a good thing. I don't feel like, I have to come back because like, I need to make sure that, you know, like I'm there to help mm -hmm. because Dank doesn't need my help. 
Um, mm. I and now I feel much more comfortable with the not all this responsibility that I had totally put on myself um, and had totally taken on on my own. Then it turns out, like Dank doesn't need me, and that's a great thing. Um, Dank probably never needed any of us in particular. It just needs people to keep coming and that energy that Alex is talking about to like keep moving forward. And okay. so now, like I would like to start coming back in a in a <laughs> much less capacity than I was before. But same thing, just like, okay, where where are my strengths in this? And like where can I really help? Mm -hmm. Um yeah. Well, when you do the when you um are successful with negotiations with the Met, you can come back and let us know. And we'll take notes and write down what you did. Yeah, it's it's a whole process. Antoine is actually also on that committee with me. Um, Love it. Which has been great. He's a new addition to it for this time around. And we're very happy to have him. Amazing team. They are very lucky to have y'all. I have one more question and then I'm going to let y'all go. I already stated my dreams for the dance world. I want dancers to be divas because we deserve it. What is your dream? for the dance world. How do you imagine the dance world to be in the future? What do you want future generations of dance artists, dancers to have? I have already answered for this. I feel like I've talked a lot, sorry. Um, you got it, David. I mean, I have, a, I have a lot of hopes and dreams for the dance world, but my main one has always been for dancers and people in general to see dance, the arts, but dance specifically as work, as a career, as labor that people do that is no different in quality than any other kind of work that people do and to respect it in the same way that dancers can have like real dignity in the work they do and not sort of do this thing that we all do of like treating ourselves as a different class of worker where it's okay that we don't get paid and it's okay that we get abused all the time and it's okay that there's like huge inequity in our industry because it's about who's lucky enough and the cream of the crop rise and yada fucking yada. Like I don't, all that needs to go away. I, mm -hmm. a, a perfect dance world to me has absolutely none of that and has dancers that treat themselves with respect and expect it to be treated with respect. Period. Who's next? Yeah, I think to, to like continue with that idea, I want a field in which dancers are, I mean, there's a culture of self-care and where it's expected um, that dancers <laughs> like need just the same kinds of things that other people and workers need, um, including pay, including breaks, including safe workplaces. And um, yeah, I want to, I want a field where people help each other, where people help themselves and help each other. And that's, that's kind of my vision, a more cooperative, stronger, um, stronger dance community. And I really mean community, like sometimes that word gets thrown around, but um, I mean a place where we're really looking out for each other and we can talk to each other um, about what's happening in our, in our work. Lovely, lovely, Alex. Um, I often when I tell people or I feel like when anyone tells someone that they're a dancer the person will say like oh that's so great you're doing what you want that's must be so nice to do work that you actually want to be doing and I feel like that's reflective of like a lot of Americans who are doing work they don't want to be doing and I I just don't see how that's freedom and so mm -hmm. I, I, want a, I want a future where people can pursue dance and the arts and labor that, they, that, that is meaningful for them and that they be, can be compensated and feel respected for it. Um, yeah, <laughs> all that. Absolutely. Well, I don't have any other final remarks. I think y'all left us off at a beautiful culminating ending. Any, any, any other thoughts? No, just thank you so much for everything you're doing, Joy Marie, and you and the whole socialist team. 
Thank you. Thank you for yeah. creating this space for us to do to, to do it. I have a great time talking to y'all. I hope you had a great time talking to me. Ted, thank you, Joy Marie. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Good to see y'all. Have you a too. great day. <laughs> you too, thanks. Y'all can sign off at any point unless you don't have anything else to say. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought they were. <laughs> Is this a performance of leaving or are we actually leaving? We can take a bow. We can take a bow. <laughs> Sign our solidarity statement at www.danceartistsnationalcollective.org and follow us on Instagram at Dance Artists National Collective and on Twitter at Dank National.